Hello, this is Brett Boy. Today we're going to learn about tracing the Windows client and web client in the HP Service Manager. So the first thing we want to do is go to the Run folder of the Service Manager application server. Open a command prompt and then start the servlet that's going to listen uh, for us to use in the trace. Okay, so we're going to be setting up on port 12345. We're going to be using the parameter debug node colon 1, which eliminates this port from the load balancer so it doesn't conflict with that. And we're going to be saving the information in the trace to the debug underscore trace dot txt file. So you can start this command from a uh, command prompt like we're doing here, or you can start it from the sm.cfg file when the service manager application starts. If you start it from a command prompt like we are doing here, then do not close this command prompt, otherwise this will close the listening servlet. So we started a servlet listening on port 12345. Now let's open the HP Service Manager Windows client and make a connection through that port. So it's just a matter of changing the default port in our client to 12345. a successful connection. One way to check that we've connected to port 1345 is to check the status screen also, even though we've you know typed it into the client here. We can go into the status screen and see that our client connection is 12345. So I logged in as administrator and you can see I've connected to PID 1444 and it's the same as the head controller ID on port 12345, so using the same PID indicates that I'm connected to that uh, servlet. Okay, the next step is to modify the WebXML on the web app server, the Tomcat server, so that uh, we honor any URLs passed as parameters in the web client URL for whatever browser you're using. The first step in that is to stop the Tomcat service, then we're going to modify make the change to the WebXML, changing the honor URL post, uh, host and honor URL port parameters. That's going to enable uh, people to pass port and server names to the URL. And then we're going to start the Tomcat service, and then we're going to uh, test the URL to see if we actually do connect to that. And then we can check the status screen again to make sure that we actually have. So we go into Windows Services and stop the Tomcat service first. We've done that. Now next we're going to modify the web XML file. So we need to go to the Tomcat web apps folder, as I mentioned earlier. Under the Apache directory, Tomcat, Web Apps, or whatever you've named your service manager directory. Open the Web Apps to XML. Now we need to locate the honor URL or honor host. Here is the honor URL host. We're going to enter true for honor URL host, and we're going to enter true for honor URL port. Then we're going to save the file. Now we need to 
read start Tomcat service again. So we go back into Windows Services, locate the Apache Tomcat service, click Start. So there we go, we have the Service Manager web client started again. Next is actually uh, opening up a browser, and this is where we're going to pass in the URL that's going to contain the server host parameter and the server port parameter that's going to allow us to connect to a service manager. You just copy and paste the URL into uh, the browser address field. Log in. We seem to have made a successful connection. Now let's take a look at system status to make sure that we've actually connected to that port and we haven't been routed to uh, 13080 or the load balancer port. Let me just sort by P PID. And as my administrator ID, I can see it's on PID 3756 and I can see that the thread controller 12305 is also on 3756. So our web client has indeed, and you can see it's a SOAP web connection, has indeed made it to the port that we passed in to Service Manager. we need to check is the trace log. We did create a log while connecting through the Windows client and the web client and it's the debug underscore trace dot txt file that we had uh, added uh, to the parameter for the startup of this 12345 port servlet and you can see that we've captured all the necessary information that we need to troubleshoot or just view the communication that's going on within Service Manager within between the server and our client.